Hello ladies, let me say hello in Hi Hirasuna Hi Silver Moon, hi Sanya Hi Elaine, thank you for making it Hi Kaur, hi Lianka, hi Sharon So I already made two of the Skinner blends that I'm going to use and this one is a white with a cadmium red and a lizarin crimson and this one is a cadmium yellow with a, a lizarin crimson and I uh, waited to do the third one with you just in case there are new people who have not seen me doing my dirty Skinner blends and for this one I'm going to actually add all four of the colors that I used here so I'm going first with the white then I'm going to go with the cadmium yellow And then I'm going to go with the red. Hi Skywalker. Yes, hi Mona. I am trying to keep the privacy and I'm just uh, saying whatever is your uh, handle on YouTube. Hi Kanchana then the cadmium red and then just a pinch of <laughs> dirty skin and blend yeah i call it dirty because it's something that's not really measured or anything if you want to do any kind of measurements on these we're gonna go with the thickest setting on your pasta machine and then the height is let's see two inches and the yellow red and a lizard and crimson are about three quarters of an inch each and the white is one inch ah oh, Mona I'm 61 and I had <laughs> chemotherapy in my life so I explained before that unless I, I interact several times, I have problems remembering who's who. Hi, Francis. The kitties are good. They are all over the house right now. We're going to have a huge, horrible heat wave here. And honestly, I'm a little bit tired because after all the rain we had, everything practically exploded. So I've been working on my uh, dog run. Yes, I still have the dog run even if I don't have a dog anymore. But uh, I had on the corner because it's like the house is like this and on the west side of the house is the dog run and it comes all the way you know to the front of the house and to the end of the house and in the front there's a gate so I have Virginia creeper on that wall of the house and then on the corner of the fence between the fence and the gate um, I had planted a trumpet vine on the outside well I can tell you that this spring from all the rains we had and from everything you could not reach the gate anymore and in the back you could not get like half of the dog run was covered and uh, i had to keep trimming both from the front and the back and then weed eating and then again and i had to pull because some of the vines of the virginia creeper went on the ground and went on the fence and started mingling with the trumpet vines so I had a lot of cutting to do and obviously I have to do all this stuff early in the morning that's why I had my sponsors uh, live usually is at 10.30 on Saturdays except for the Saturdays when I have my live chat but I had to do it yesterday in the afternoon because 
um, I have to do stuff in the garden before noon, after which I cannot work for today. It's, we are supposed to have between 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. heat warning of 110 degrees, so not good. Just a bit of explanation, what I'm doing now is just the plain folding on the machine. And I got to this point where it's long enough that I can start fan folding it. And um, I was asked before, do you need to condition very well your clay before doing the Skinner blend? Not really, because it gets conditioned plenty when you're doing the Skinner blend. Uh, unless you have a clay that's absolutely drier and firmer than the other clays, no. But if you have one like that, you will have to. It's recommended to condition that and uh, thin it out. So now I'm going to start rolling uh, grab a paper towel so that I can make the Skinner blend go by faster. And why I'm rolling? Because when you roll, you do multiple uh, foldings. Yes, fortunately, my, my eyesight, I'm sorry that you still have eyesight problems. My eyesight really recovered a lot after I had the cataracts surgeries. It was really helpful. What I'm worried about is uh, my mom had macular degeneration so with my poor eyes, because I had poor eyesight since I was a child, that's something that worries me. I'm worried that I might get it too as I age. So once again, when you're doing the rolling, try to get uh, kind of like color on color, but don't be too um, worried about it because you need to do a little bit of overlapping in order for the gradient to occur, right? I'm trying at this point, I'm still trying to keep it fairly narrow before I start just folding. And you will see that by using all of them, there's a different uh, gradient and it's a little bit better uh, defined. This might be my very last. I'm gonna do it one more time. Because see, now it's almost completely gradienty. So, why? What is your problem, Elaine? If you don't mind saying. I know I still have uh, floaters. I was supposed to go after like half a year to a year after the cataracts uh, surgery. I was supposed to go have them laser 
uh, burned but then the pandemic happened and you can imagine I wasn't very thrilled about the idea of having somebody in my face like this mask or no mask okay so now all I'm going to do is to just fold and I'm going to count how many times So at this point, after three, I have already a very nice um, uh, gradient happening. But I want to do this until I widen it out. Mona, look in my uh, Amazon Influencer Store because it should be, I activated one link and it should bring you into Canada. If you go in my Amazon Influencer Store and you go to Pasta Machines, you'll find several brands. point I can definitely cut it so as I showed you before I cut on one end and then bring it to how wide my strip I want it to be cut and now lift this other portion and bring it here and this way I have a perfectly straight Thank you, Skywalker. Okay. So I got it on the thicker setting, and then I'm going to go with it on a thinner setting. But as you could see, it didn't take too long to to do that. Yeah, I had myopia, myopia, and the, when I had the cataract surgery, they actually put a lens. They replaced my lens. Now I have to wear um, glasses for clothes, but it's good I chose that because they asked me if I want to keep it that way or if I want it and the insurance the Medicare and Medicaid they don't cover um, bifocals so I had to choose one so yeah my only problem with it is that because uh, thank you Valerie because uh, one of the side effects of cataracts and they weren't able to I mean they told me that they nobody knows at this point the exact reason why but but cataracts very often gives you dry eyes no not at all it was not painful at all I was in twilight uh, on the second one I was actually quite awake <laughs> So I kind of saw what they were doing, but it didn't hurt at all. Uh, the only thing, the recovery was very fast. The only thing that you need to be very careful about that you're not supposed to bend, you know, bend like this, and you're not supposed to lift anything heavier than two or three pounds because that can cause the stuff to pop. But okay so now we have these three and I might put in some inserts of black or white we'll see how things go 
So let's let's roll. So remember, I am creating the base triangle out of which. Uh, it will be the whole cane can be uh, built. So what I'm going to do with this one, what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to actually first triangularize it. Yeah, and it was about, about a, a month and a half to two months between the two eyes because they don't do it both at the same time. And you have to go twice. But you see better right away and as time goes by, as, as days go by, uh, your vision becomes more and more uh, clear. Uh, we are making a complex cane, Valerie. So what I'm doing is to actually kind of bring it in a... If you're going to say, why didn't you make a round one? It's because, yeah, I can obtain this shape out of cutting a round one, round plug in half, but I don't intend to to use more than this, so the other half would have gone to waste or stayed forever somewhere just waiting for me to to use it. Okay, so now I got a semicircle. And my first thing with the semicircle is you can use uh, an old gift card or debit card or whatever. I have this from a Mod Podge, Mod Podge that I'm going to use. And I'm going to push. And then bring it over. Oops. Again, push. And bring it over. And one more, push and bring it over. So now we got this, and I'm going to repeat this just to make sure that everything is pushed properly in. And one, one more time, bring it over like this. we have a pretty thing going on. Hi, Anna. Well, depends how much you, you use, you know, you don't have to use a lot of clay. And remember, as long as you store the original triangle, you can make several variants of the cane. If you didn't watch it, look for my uh, 101 complex canes tutorial. And that uh, shows exactly how to uh, do the whole original triangle thing. Okay, so as you can see, I reduced it a little bit. I'm gonna trim the edges. And I'm going to actually cut it in two. Yeah, I guess I'm going to use it in two spots, but they are smallish. So it's, however, <laughs> my fanciness decides. Okay. Now, I'm going to add some stuff. So, 
I'm going to get some black and make a string. I showed you before how to make a beautiful perfect string using a piece of acrylic. Just hold on it and then gently pull while I'm doing this. <coughs> so let's put one here. for it. Almost looks like a pomegranate. And then one here. Hi Gail, hi Colleen. Hi KD. This is one of them. On this one, what do I want to make here? I'm going to actually give it a bigger. I'm going to give it a bigger blob in the right in the middle. what am I going to do with this I'm going to change it like this I'm going to actually change the square not into a round but so that I have one corner with the Laser in crimson, one corner with the yellow, and then one each corner with the transition. And there we go. little too long. Thank you. <coughs> I 
All right, and now I'm going to cut this in half. And again, we're going to do some special inserts. Thank you, Anna. So I'm going to insert a little bit of black. On a fairly, on a fairly low setting. I can and get the thinner one. And the second cut. Thank you so much, Elaine. All righty. And with this one, we are going to do a, diff a little bit of different stuff. Let me make a string of white. sure that they are the same distance I mean see this edge and this edge
and there we go. No cold. Thank you so much. Hi Bernadette. Cold bothers me. Heat not so much unless it's a big um, atmospheric pressure change. I don't but I cannot I'm heat intolerant so it doesn't bother me he doesn't bother me pain wise but it bothers me otherwise I faint I cannot be in the heat too much I have a very since I had chemo I have a very narrow um, comfortable temperature uh, span pretty much anything that's 70 and below will send me my teeth chattering and anything that's 75 and above I'm like this don't know what uh, what the Crisco sticks plastic holders are okay now with this one what should I do with this one in terms of Alright, I'm going to start narrowing it here, but I'm pressing, I don't want to pinch, because I don't want the ends to come together, I want to, for it to kind of come together naturally, and of course from time to time you need to press it back, because as you pinch it, it will have the tendency to go like this. The, the white came out a little bit too much so let's go ahead and get rid of the extra white and continue narrowing now I can start pinching and I'm going to get rid more of the extra white I'm just going to do a little bit diagonal cut because for what I want to do here okay so now I can start manipulating it it a little so this should go like this so a little bit longer and let's spiral it out to be a very nice organic flow to it.
this will work fine. Now, I'm going to <coughs> insert something here, right here. Maybe not really insert, but do another flow. I don't know. Or see how, once I stretch it out, how it speaks to me. Yeah, I don't need Crisco. So I don't know. I'm homebound all the time. I'm trying to Okay, I'm kind of lost. Make a form and bake it what? Okay, so... Let's put a little bit of white here. That is great. If you can start working on stuff, that is awesome. So, let's see if I put this here. If I put this here. something here definitely so let's make a little ball and then make a sausage it in black Bake a permanent form of what? Because you're losing me. I mean, you're talking about Crisco. You're talking about polymer clay or what? I'm completely lost. we are aiming for a square, um, a triangle, right? So what would be the most triangular thing here? I do this here and I can I'm going to transform it into a triangle.
Chico or Crisco? How can you make molds out of Crisco? I have no idea what Chico is. I know Crisco is fat. Chico! Okay, so I think it's going to look very petroglyph-like. And because of that, I think I'm going to insert one more thing here. that I need a square thing so I'm going to use one of the square pairs and I'm going to give it a triangular insert here As I said, I'm storing my clay in a, in cellophane bags and I put them in freezer trays. Okay, this. And then let's put a white thing here. I'm going to put a kind of like a white stick triangle These ones, you look in my Amazon influencer store in the organizer. <clears throat> These are the cellophane bags. They are bags. They are, um, what you call it, self 
adhesive. You remove this little tape and they are self-adhesive. And then, oops, sorry. And then I keep them like this. In the freezer boxes. Yeah, they are long and narrow. And you can easily see what's in here. And it's a type of cellophane that <clears throat> doesn't attack the, it's fridge actually, not freezer, doesn't attack the um, uh, polymer clay and doesn't get attacked by polymer clay. So works just fine. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of black in the middle of all this, so. I just use the toothpick here. And I'm going to insert a string of black. But yeah, if you look in my Amazon influencer store, you can find them in the organizing stuff. And then what I have here is one of those four shelves carts on wheels so that I can bring close to me whenever I need it. That's my, the stuff that I use pretty much daily, like the clay, some of the um, textures, the wax paper, the um, aluminum foil, the blade, the cling wrap. Okay, so this should do good. All righty. It's not freezer bag. These are not, no, I don't, you keep the clay in the refrigerator. These are not, free, these are bags for gifts or for selling or stuff. But because of the way they are, and always put the clay in it folded on the thickest setting and fold it because it's easier to take out. But you can easily put uh, one of those two. It's just the, the, boxes they are theoretically they are fridge boxes to put stuff in it cheeses and other stuff to be easier to take out and organize your fridge but uh, otherwise no they are not freezer bags by no means okay so i'm going to start reducing this I'll grab my larger thing so i don't let it lose too much and remember you always have to pull a little bit on the edges and never press down on the middle because it's going to go like this you always push from the top to cut a piece of this and continue so I can make one cane. So this is what you need to uh, store. This is your primordial cane. Let me cut the end. You see it's very, very interesting, very complex. Okay. Continue. 
Yeah, my canes, actually, the way that I store my canes is, uh, and uh, people who um, purchase my uh, canes or just the, uh, these stash packages in which I put canes, uh, the way that I store my canes, I wrap them in uh, cling wrap and then I put a little bit of uh, that tape that's so-called invisible to hold it. Big, or I may wrap it also in uh, a wax paper. depends if it's a square cane I will wrap it in cling wrap but if it's a round cane to help keep the roundness and not get squished by accident I roll them in wax paper with the waxed side of the wax paper inside or towards the cane but generally speaking I keep my canes in cling wrap So I'm going to keep doing it in a, going to turn it into a right angle so that I can put it together and I'm going to make a full radio. See, I'm pushing it against the acrylic block to make sure that I have a right angle. And now I can cut it. We trim the very edges. You can see I didn't waste a lot. right angle against right angle and check the back to be the same and now I'm going to do this one reduce this one and again it has to be right angle and it's going to just simply get mirrored on the other side. You can do it even more, but I personally think that it has too many elements. So if you make them too small, it might not. Uh, of course, you can make those elements and then try and do something else. You know, the, what I'm showing you generally is just to give you an idea of how to proceed and you can do various other uh, things with that. So here I'm not pushing, I'm just pulling the clay in case it stayed behind. I'm only pressing on the top. it's on a right angle so 
so when you start laying it out it's going to do a beautiful brocade style thing actually I'm really I think I'm gonna do it in four radial I'm going to do it one more one more reduction two and a quarter let's go to two and a half I'm not going to have to do a lot of reduction because it's a little bit longer. And I will be bringing it closer and focus, refocus so you can see it better once it's done but we are almost there okay so I'm going to measure here in a minute it's a very delicate and <coughs> complicated stopping like one eighth short of two it properly it's quite small I didn't cut a big piece of this but okay I'm going to refocus the camera So you can see it in all its beauty. And there you go. And it's the end, so it still has a little bit of uh, messes, but this is pretty much how it will look like. And you can see as you as you put it, you keep combining it. It's going to make another flower here. So generally speaking, remember that's the principle of the brocade. You get this, and then you start, you put one like this, then one like this, then one like this, then one like this, and you just keep covering. Remember when we did that uh, black brocade thing? So yeah, this is pretty much it. Uh, place it in the fridge for like half an hour before starting to cut it if it's freshly made 
if you made it for a while remember that you'll have to warm it up and this is why I say to everybody do not uh, store your canes small because warming up a cane the only way that you can do it is by reducing it a little bit so if it's already small there's not much reduction you'll be able to do so thank you so much thank you uh, so store them a little bit larger and it's easier to reduce them when they are a little bit larger than to get you know okay I'm going to finally go lay down because my back is killing me and I'm sleepy I worked too hard <laughs> and I still have to do a lot of other stuff in the garden but until I get the garden in I told you I have my city is very strict with how your front yard is supposed to look like and if it doesn't look right they send people to fix it and then they send you the bill so I don't want to get the notification that I have 10 days to fix stuff because I don't want to get there <laughs> okay thank you so much and I will see you next Sunday I will uh, put out what's going to be for next Sunday and I will take into consideration how you responded to the poll in the community tab that I posted so if you didn't answer yet that poll hurry up and go on my channel community tab you'll find the poll in which I ask you what you'd like to see more for this summer okay thank you Sharon Thank you, ladies. See you all next Sunday. Have a wonderful what's left of this weekend.